Do you ever find when you're watching YouTube that you watch one video and the volume of that video is just fine, but when you come to the next one, it sounds really loud. So you turn the volume down and then when you move on to another video, you got to turn it back up again. And I suppose that's a little bit irritating. Or you're watching a particular video and you find that as you're watching it, the voice is just absolutely fine. But when it comes to some music, the music is really loud. Turn it down a little bit in order to have a comfortable listening level. And then when you come back to the voice, you have to turn it up again to hear it clearly. And that's because the individual elements within that video are not consistent as to how they sound to the human ear. So this is all about loudness. And I'm going to show you in this video how you can set the loudness of your video to be the optimum for your platform, if that's YouTube or another platform and how you can set the individual elements of your video so that they all come across at the right level of volume for the human ear. If we Google loudness standards, you'll see that there are a number that have been specified. And these are measured in LUFS, that's loudness units full scale. That is a standard for measuring how loud something sounds to the human ear. YouTube comes in at minus 14 and uh, European broadcast at minus 23 and US broadcast at minus 24. So those are the standards that you should try to hit if you're creating for those particular platforms. So in our case, for this video, we're gonna look at minus 14 for YouTube. I have here a sample project with three different elements of audio within it. Uh, there is a first person speaking, there is a second person speaking, and then thirdly, there is a music track. Now, the music track has already been set using the essential sound panel to duck against the other elements of speech, the other people speaking in the project. So it's ducking against the audio one and the audio two elements that are here. And that's something that you can look at in the essential sound panel. What it's actually doing is it is lowering or ducking the volume of the music when someone is speaking so that the music doesn't overwhelm the voice, but yet the music then will come back up to its normal volume uh, while no one is speaking. And that will be used particularly against the images that are in this video. So this is what we have. I have put the two different people onto separate audio tracks. So the first person is in audio track one, the second person is on audio track two, and the music is on audio track three. Now it can be handy if you rename your audio track so that we know what we're working with when we get into doing the adjustments. If you don't see the opportunity to rename the tracks, if you double click on the track, Premiere will make it double height and you can then click on the name of the track and rename it. I'm gonna call the first one voiceover. I'm gonna call the second one, oops, need to just uh, reveal that again. Going to call the second one um, speech. And I'm going to call the third one music. So we now know what we're working with and we're going to go into the audio workspace. And in this case, we need to look at the audio track mixer. Now there are two mixers that you have access to. There is the audio clip mixer and the audio track mixer. In our case, we want to look at the audio track mixer. Before we do that, it's good to set the gain on these tracks to get them consistent to start with. So I'm just going to select everything that's on that particular track. That is the voiceover track. Press the letter G to bring up gain and normalize the maximum peak to minus three. So that's the start that brought the gain down a little bit. I'm going to do the same with the speech track. So I'm going to press G again, normalize the maximum peak, that is sometimes called the true peak, to minus three decibels. And you'll see it's leveled both those out at minus three. I'm not making any change to the music track because I've already checked it in the essential sound panel. 
So having done that, we can then add some effects that will allow us to control these tracks. What we have in the audio track mixer here is we have got the voiceover track, we've got the speech track, we've got the music track, and we have got the mix of all of those combined together. So we want to have a look at this video and see how it looks from the point of view of loudness to hit that target of minus 14 or a little bit below that. So let's let's have a look at that now. So the way to do that is to look on the mix um, track and in one of these sparse effects slots, you see um, FX for effects, you can press the down arrow key. We can go to special and we can go to loudness radar. If I double click on the loudness radar effect, it will open the loudness radar window. And there are a couple of settings that we ought to change. First of all, it is set to LKFS and the standard that we're wanting to adhere to is LUFS. So we just select LUFS from the drop down. Secondly, I want to set the target. It's set broadcast at the moment at minus 24. So I want to set it to uh, something appropriate for YouTube, but I'm going to set it to minus 16. Now I know that the YouTube standard is minus 14, but I'm just giving ourselves a safety margin of two on that. And finally, I'm going to set the radar speed to one minute, which means that one full sweep of the radar will take a minute. This outer ring, not the very outer circumference of the radar, but this ring that is, is here, is the level that we want to achieve as we play the video. So let's play the video then for a short while to see how our audio is doing against the standard of minus 14. I believe in considering how a family will live within the new space and then work from the inside out to ensure that these important elements and features are built in from day one. This means future proofing is really important. Children's needs change as they grow and perhaps aging parents will eventually move in. Lighting is one of the most important. So I have paused the video and you can see that we're falling inside the target ring here. And in actual fact, the average LUFS is minus 19.5. So if we wanted to get up to minus 16, we really want to add 3.5 to this to get to that level. So let's do that. Now, how we're going to do that is we're going to add another effect. In this case, we're going to add the effect of um, hard limiter. I don't need to do any hard limiting, but if I open this up, you'll see that there is an option which is input boost, and I can put that input boost to 3.5 and that will add 3.5 decibels of loudness to the or, or of gain to the track in order to get there. So what we're going to do is just go back to the beginning here and I'm going to open the loudness radar again. You can click on the little reset button to um, start back from the beginning again. Choose the timeline the panel luxurious new and start again. The interior of your home will impact your life on a daily basis. So these decisions shouldn't be left until the end. I believe in considering how a family will live within the new space and then work from the inside out to ensure that these important elements and features are built in from day one. This means future proofing is really important. Now, in this case, uh, there are some areas in which we're now exceeding that boundary. Uh, the average is still low enough. That's absolutely fine. But I do want to be going over this area. So there are several different ways of addressing this. We could put keyframes into the audio in order to reduce the level at the times at which it is peaking over the standard that we want to achieve. Or we could use compressor to even out the sound somewhat. In this case, I'm just going to take it down by a couple of decibels. So I'm going to go back in to my hard limiter and just take that back to maybe 1.5 to see how that works. So I've taken it down really by two, two decibels here. So we we'll go back here to the to where we were before. I'm going to open up the loudness radar again, and we're going to reset the display. I'll 
Select the timeline panel, press the space bar, see how we look. The interior of your home will impact your life on a daily basis, so these decisions shouldn't be left until the end. I believe in considering how a family will live within the new space and then work from the inside out to ensure that these important elements and features are built in from day one. So this is hitting more or less exactly the standard that we want and now what we need to do is move on to the other elements of the video and check that they are also right. So let's look then at the, the track that has speech on it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the hard limiter effect into this one um, as well so that we can use that to adjust the volume. I'm going to reset our loudness radar and play the, play the track. I've lived here for a long time and the house itself was fine, but the room was very dark. It was dominated by a big brick fireplace um, and I just wanted a bit more light. Um, and actually so this is way below the standard that we're actually looking for. So let's take that hard limiter, double click the effect and let's add uh, maybe four decibels to, to this track and try again, see what it looks like. So open up the loudness radar, reset the display and... I've lived here yeah. for a long time and the house itself was fine, but the room was very dark. It was dominated by a big brick fireplace. Um, and I just wanted a bit more light um, and actually just to bring a sense of joy to the house. No, I think that uh, there's room for another decibel um, here. So let's do that. Let's add that. So we just take that and I'll turn that up to five um, decibels. Go back to the point that we were at. And uh, we go back to the loudness radar, reset it here and play the track again. I've lived here for a long time and the house itself was fine, but the room was very dark. It was dominated by a big brick fireplace. Um, and I just wanted a bit more light um, and actually just to bring a sense of so I think we more or less hit the, the, the perfect level here, just uh, fractionally inside the, the target ring. And finally, I just want to check how we are on the music portions of the video. So I'll, I'll go to around here, which is where there is no voiceover, but there is some, I'll go back to here actually and play through this portion from here of the, of the music track. So I've got to reset this. And we're going to play the sequence again. I reckon that's about perfect. So I think the video is set up all, all ready to go. And um, by, by altering the tracks, everything that's on that track gets changed. And we now have a video that has all the elements at the correct level so that no one will have to adjust the sound as they play it. So we're now going to load this up onto YouTube and I'll show you how you can tell what YouTube is doing to it. Because if you load a video that is too loud, YouTube will bring down the volume on that video. If you upload a video that is too quiet, YouTube will not increase the volume. So the ideal is for you to hit the standard spot on. Let's have a look in YouTube. So here we have the video in YouTube already uploaded. And uh, I'm just going to play it from where it is at the moment. Or storage or a new kitchen and luxurious new bathroom. The interior of your... If you want to see how YouTube has handled your audio, right click on the video and go to Stats for Nerds and it will open this little window and there's a couple of interesting things here. So the first thing is that you'll see that the volume is at 80%. That means that my YouTube volume 
is set to 80 percent um, and if i um, press the up or down arrow you'll see that it is indeed set to 80 percent beyond that you have content loudness at minus three decibels so what we've learned for this is that because the volume and the normalized volume are both at 80 percent they're both equal that means that youtube has not reduced the volume if one of them was lower than the other if the normalized volume was lower then you would see that YouTube had lowered the volume because it was set too loud. And you could also see that the content loudness is at minus 3.9 decibels. And what this indicates is that I'm below the standard. Now, you may remember when we did the processing that I provided a safety margin of two decibels, and then I made sure that we were clearly inside that ring. So I allowed quite a big safety margin. I think maybe in this case, a little bit too much and we could have gone up a little bit. And I think a good level to target here is minus two decibels. So you're not absolutely hitting the YouTube max. You're two decibels under it, and that will keep most people happy as they watch your videos. That's what you can learn from the stats for nerds within YouTube. And that's how you can get your video so that all the elements are consistent in volume, comfortable to the ear, and that your video is nice and loud, hitting almost the maximum for YouTube, and that you won't um, then disturb other viewers by being too loud, and you won't disturb other users by having them turn up the volume to watch your videos. So I hope you find that beneficial. And if you did, please put a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and you'll get more tips and tutorials on how to make the best video productions using Premiere.